Good afternoon for everybody in the US and good evening for those of you in the Croatia area. We'll get started in about another minute or so, just waiting for all of our attendees to join. For those of you who have just entered, we'll be starting in about another 30 seconds to a minute. Okay. Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Becoming a Published Author. I am Ron Goldberg, Senior Director of Volunteer and Digital Programs on the Henrietta New York campus and your moderator this afternoon. Before I introduce our speaker, there are a few housekeeping points I want to go over. All attendees have joined in mute mode. However, your questions can be entered in the Q&A box at any time throughout the discussion. We'll make every effort to address all your comments and questions throughout the webinar. If you have any technical questions, please feel free to type those in the Q&A box as well, and we will respond to you as quickly as possible. We would like to thank our Access Services team for helping us make this webinar accessible for all of our alumni. Real-time captioning is available within the webinar, and our interpreters will be spotlit during the presentation. The pandemic has had a major impact on everyone, including our students. We thank all of our friends and alumni for the support you have given to our students during these uncertain times. RIT Croatia was founded in 1997, and we're excited to be celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Through the year, we'll be organizing many different activities and events in order to celebrate this important anniversary, and our alumni will, of course, be included in some of them. One of the first activities organized in order to celebrate the anniversary are alumni web webinars held by our alumni from our Croatian campus. And this is the fourth one. We will continue with more alumni webinars on different interesting topics later in the year. Now, on to our session. We're pleased to welcome Daniela Serlin. Daniela graduated from RIT in Dubrovnik in 2004 with a degree in hospitality and tourism, and then went on to earn a master's degree in economics. For the last 11 years, she's been working in nautical tourism the last seven as a marina director. Daniela, a part-time lecturer at the University of Economics in Dubrovnik, where she teaches courses on hotel management. Deep down, Daniela believes she's always been a humanist rather than an economist and guesses she's the only RIT student who did a study guide for Croatian opera as her senior project. Her master's thesis was on intellectual capital, so it looks like she was always choosing topics that would allow her to focus on people rather than numbers. Daniela's first book was published last year in June 2021, and she's extremely excited about this new chapter she opened. Daniela, thank you for joining us. The audience is all yours. Thank you, Ron. Thank you for this lovely introduction. I wouldn't uh, write it better myself. <laughs> um, if I may um, start before uh, starting actually with the webinar, I would like to welcome all of you who decided to join us today. Um, and I hope you'll enjoy. Um, I'm really glad to have this opportunity. And I have to say, I'm really glad to have an opportunity to have um, the thing I'm gonna say now on record finally. And that's, I've been a part of RIT and RIT Croatia community for 22 years. It was an honor, it is an honor and a privilege to be a part of this unique um, family and RIT and RIT Croatia never failed to support its students and alumni. And I'm deeply um, appreciative of the fact that I'm a part of you guys. So thank you, thank you once again. So let's talk books. Um, to talk about a book is actually, un or unfortunately, to talk about a writer who wrote it, regardless of the topic you choose. And it doesn't matter how, um, is it fiction or um, how much truth is in your book, is it based on a true story or is it partially like mine, based on a true story? Um, it always comes from your inner world, from the writer's inner world, because you're always addressing certain dilemmas you're having about life, about society, maybe a particular struggle um, you're going through. So um, it's always personal. 
writing a novel is, I can say, very much different from, from writing a master thesis or a PhD. Um, in these works, you're usually taking someone else's conclusions and then making, um, through research, a conclusion of your own. But when you're writing a novel, it's really a piece of you out there. Um, writing has always been something that I needed to do. Um, it was not only something I wanted to do, it was really a necess necessity for me. Um, uh, writing, I, I think I understand the world much better if I write something down, down and then contemplate on it. Um, that's not unique, actually. It's proven that writing is much closer to um, thinking than speaking. We just don't notice this because we're constantly surrounded with chatter and, and noise. So as much as I hate giving advices um, to all of you out there who maybe are thinking about writing something, my first advice, advice would be to um, learn how to quiet your mind, uh, learn how to stop and how to be comfortable with yourself. You have to enjoy your solitude in order to write. Um, writing, as I said, has always been something that I needed to do. Um, I have a massive collection of diaries throughout my life. And I think I was, I was always a writer. I just, didn't, I just didn't know it. And to anyone, you know, a lot of people were surprised when I published this book, but to me, it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't anything new. It was just a, 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 natural, um, a natural thing that, that happened. When I, found, when I finally found a publisher. Um, can we please move to the next slide? Thank you. When I got this invitation from RIT, I was thinking it would be a good idea to come up with the definition of my own, like becoming an author is and then finish the sentence. And uh, apparently I'm good with words, but I couldn't find <laughs> this definition because it's really, it's, it's mixed. It's, First of all, it's challenging. You're entering completely a new platform. Um, as a hotel rate major and uh, somebody with masters in economics, nobody expects you to, to write. And then nobody, I, I have to say, I met a lot of prejudices um, when I decided to go, go on with it, you know? Um, it's challenging because it's challenging because you're entering a new platform. You have no idea how this field works. You have no connections. Um, you're a no name. And for these same reasons, it's also very exciting. Um, if you're like me and you have this childish curiosity that pushes you through life or through projects, then it's really it's really fun, you know, to watch um, to watch this whole process. Um, taking, taking place. Once the book is out there and you start receiving all the feedback back, if it's good, it's, it can be really, really rewarding. I could almost compare it to um, when somebody praises your well-behaved child. Um, for, those, for all of you who are parents, you know exactly what I mean. Um, it's also rewarding in a, in a way that um, it's a piece of you out there, you know, so when somebody says good things about your book, um, you actually really, really feel good about yourself. It's, it can be scary if the, feedbacks, if the feedback is, is, is negative and it's not always gonna be positive. And that's the part you have to deal with as a writer. You have to kind of remove this part of ego, you know, because ego that gets hurt when you, um, when you ne get a negative, a negative uh, feedback. But I would say that in all in all, it's a really rewarding thing to have your book published, um, especially for the first time. It's kind of, it's kind of unique. Uh, next slide, please. So what does it take? I believe you have to love your story more than anything. You have to be completely infatuated like a teenager you have to be um, um, taken by it you know and, and I think it only when you feel like that then your readers are gonna are gonna feel it um, feel what you felt when when you were writing it um, I cannot stress enough the importance of knowing your own language 
um, excellent grammar knowledge, rich vocabulary. These are all very, very important things that um, um, come in handy when you're writing a book. Unfortunately, having an excellent knowledge of your language does not guarantee you finding a publisher, but being bad at it will almost definitely, um, with, I can almost say with 100% will not get you, will not get you one. You're not gonna find a publisher if you're not good at it, these, these things. Unfortunately, it's not something that you can build on later in life. It's something that we work on from elementary school. And I feel it's really important that we push our kids a little bit further away from social media and um, bring them back to reading and writing. Um, it's, um, it's crucial because you don't think the same if you read a lot in your life or if you spent a lot of time on Instagram. So I think it's really, really important that we as parents or teachers or, or even just adults um, um, say to our children that reading is, um, reading is crucial. Good writers read a lot. And that's also something that you cannot make up for it, you know, later in life. It's, you either like to read or not. And, and you can also, when, you, when you're a kid, you, you learn how to love, um, love reading. And I think I've never met a writer, a good writer, who hates reading or doesn't like it um, too much. But I, I don't think it exists. So these two things go um, hand in hand. Writing is a discipline and it requires discipline. It requires time and it requires your patience. But when you want, when, when you have a good story on your hand, hands, it's gonna take you, you know, she will, and I'm deliberately choosing to describe a story as a jealous woman here who takes you and won't let you go. Um, when you have a good story on your hands that you will know it and it will not let you go. It will, you will not be at peace until it's, it's written. So all these stories, I don't have enough time. Um, um, you know, I have too much work to do that just, it, that, that, that actually doesn't exist because when, if you want to write, you're going to write. There are no, no excuses. Um, when it comes to discipline, um, a lot of, I've heard a lot of people say that if you want to be a writer, you have to write every day or you have to write every day for a certain amount of time. For me, that just doesn't work. If I'm inspired, I'm going to write. If I'm not, I'm just going to I'm just gonna leave it. I think um, for me, I, I write a lot of, a lot of, of my writing goes in my head, you know? And then when I sit down and start writing, it's kind of already there. Um, I, you have to choose what fits you. For me, um, for example, I love nice atmosphere and nice settings. I think half of my book was written in um, hotel bars. I just like the, the atmosphere atmosphere around me, nice music, um, peace and quiet. And uh, for me, that was, that was kind of really, really important. Um, next slide, please. So let's talk about landing a publisher. Publishing is not an event, but a process. And it takes time and it takes patience. And if you're not ready to push it to the end, um, then I, I don't think you should um, even think about it because it really takes a lot of energy and a lot of time, especially the first time you're, you're doing it. Um, when I, I, I was writing maybe a year and a half, a little bit more than a year, year and a half, um, I was writing the book, but, and maybe I could have gone on this publishing hunt sooner, but I wanted to be perfect, perfect according to my own standards. So I kept going back and redoing and rewriting. Um, I'm not the type of uh, person who would finish page 15 today and then start page 16 tomorrow. Um, I would go back to page 10 and then reread again what I wrote. And a lot of times I change. Uh, so these changes actually took, took a lot more time than um, writing itself. Um, but I, that's just, that's just um, the way I work. Um, so it took a lot of time to write it. And then I started to um, thinking about publishing. I wanted to, I'm a nerd. 
So I listed 10 or not, maybe 15 uh, publishing companies and um, I decided to send them an email. And it was right then that reality hit me. No one answered. It's not a problem of getting a negative feedback. It's the problem is getting any feedback at all. So you have to be, if you want to write and if you want to go into this story, um, you have to be aware that um, a lot of people are just going to ignore you. Um, so when I didn't get any reply um, after my first email, I decided to try again. So I resent all the emails um, a couple of weeks later, maybe even two months later. And um, I got two responses. One of them said that they're not financing any new authors. Um, and uh, the other one said they would get back to me if they decide to take any new authors and they, they never did. Now, there's something I knew from the beginning, um, from, the, from when I was just um, starting to write my book. I knew I would never go into self-publishing, not with the first book. It kind of felt like um, comforting my own talent. And that just didn't, that, that didn't sit with me well. I wanted the whole package. I wanted a publisher, an editor, a lector, and I wanted, I wanted them all to say, oh, this, is, this book is, is good. We can print our names next to hers. And that was really important to me. So um, after two months, I was kind of already giving up and I was ready not to publish. And I was thinking, okay, this story is going to stay with me and um, it's going to be in maybe a nice memory for my children because the story is about my family. It follows five generations of a family, but I can say that it's not just my story. It's everyone's story because it um, explores this idea that um, history repeats itself and that we never learn. And uh, that our decisions are, as much as we like to think they're ours, they're not. Um, they're being conditioned with, by everything that happened before, even generations and generations before. So um, the story was kind of a memoir of uh, my family and I wanted to leave it to my children if it doesn't get, if it, it, it's not, it was obvious to me back then that it was not gonna get published. And I was already giving up as I said, but then it turns out that once you give up the attention to have and replace it with the intention to kind of give, um, you get back exactly what you gave up. It was, I, I remember exactly the night when it happened. I was out with a friend of mine in a bar we never went. Um, it was already close to midnight. And all of a sudden she started talking about a friend of hers who just got published for the first time. And in that moment, um, that person came through the door. And to me, that was a clear sign <laughs> um, that I, maybe I should contact this new publisher they were talking about. So I did, I contacted them um, the very next day. And to cut the long story short, uh, Nakla the Fragment, that's the name of the publishing company, is today on the cover of my book. So that turned out really, really um, nicely. What I didn't share with my publisher at that time was that I was not going to publish my book without an editor. And my publisher is a really small company. They're brand new. They were just founded, I think, maybe a couple of months before Corona. Um, really unfortunate times to be starting a new business. Um, we signed the contract, but then they notified me when this whole um, situation happened that we were gonna wait a little while, which actually worked for me because it gave me time to find the editor. And my patience once again um, paid off because my editor, you can see the name, Juliana Matanovic. Miss Juliana Matanovic is one of the most renowned Croatian female authors. I think even the most published ones. Um, and it was also by accident through a friend of a friend. Um, she read my book, my script, and she loved it. And she decided to uh, be my editor. So I'm really proud and humble to have her name next to mine on, on the book. So once we signed the contract, 
um, it's the, I told you that it, it's not an event, it's a process. And the process uh, um, has probably dozens or even hundreds of emails exchanged between me and the editor and publisher. And then um, all these other people come in. Uh, next slide, please. So from the author to the reader, um, it's, a long, it's a long way. Uh, as a first person here, I listed agents, but Croatia is such a small market, we don't have many book agents. We usually work directly with publishers. Any writer contacts either publisher or, or, or editor. Sometimes the publisher, if it's a big company, they're gonna have editors of their own. Um, sometimes they don't, like it was in, in my case, then if you want, you can um, go and find it. I would always recommend finding it because um, you know how they say that book is not to be judged by the cover. Um, I don't judge the book by the cover. I judge it by the first page. You know, when you flip the cover inside, you have who wrote it, who published it and who edited it. Um, and these, these facts are really important to me. Sometimes I even buy a book um, of by an author that I never, um, I never knew, like I never heard of him before, but the editor was good and that it's kind of a guarantee that the book is going to be good. And um, it's having an editor and a um, good publisher, good editor and good lector, it th does guarantee a certain quality of the book. And that's why I wanted all these people to participate um, in, in my book. Um, so agents, as I said, that's really a new market in Croatia. Um, publisher is a company that takes your words and they put it in a they put it in a book. Editor is a, is um, usually a writer himself or herself, and he does a very important job. He scans your story. Um, really in detail. Sometimes they're going to recommend deleting sentences or changing certain parts, um, maybe adding something or just explain better certain characters or um, certain parts of the, of the book. So their job is really, really important. Lecture is more of um, cosmetics. They're going to do the grammar thing. They're going to check your punctuation and stuff like this, but they're not going to dig, dig um, too deep in the story. They have other work to do. Then when you have everything almost ready, it's time to create um, your, your cover. And that's when graphic designer comes in handy. Now, sometimes publishing companies um, have their own graphic designer and it's already in the contract that they're gonna do it. In my case, that, that, wasn't the, that wasn't the case with my publisher. So I had to come up with um, um, a, cover of my, a cover of my own. They did have some, a, a graphic designer, but since I knew exactly what I wanted to be on my cover, I was kind of persistent and um, we stick with my idea. Now I'm gonna talk about this, the cover a uh, little bit um, on the next slide. I would just like to mention that once um, graphic designer is done with the, with the cover of the book, that's when you start distributing. Um, so the bookstores, there is, you can have a small publisher um, who's gonna probably treat you more of like a person, not a number. Um, if you have a big publisher, that's going to be good because your book, your cover is going to be, your uh, distribution system is, is bigger. But I've heard a lot of stories that a big publisher treats you um, as, a, as just a number. So yes, your book is going to get, um, get inside many bookstores, but maybe it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up on some top shelf when nobody can reach it. So there are plus and minuses in, on both sides in having a big publishing company or a small publishing company. Um, after the book hits bookstores, and hopefully it gets sold in many, many, many copies, um, that's when you are um, being judged. So people are starting to read it and some critiques are commenting your book and bloggers and there are so many people on, like today everyone has a camera a microphone and a pen. Everybody can critique anything. So it's important to filter all these comments. Unfortunately, some of the readers you're gonna lose because of some of the comments, um, but that's okay because 
you're gonna get so much more with positive feedback. So it's again this plus minus so plus minus thing. Can we move on the next slide, please? So the cover, I just wanted to show you how it actually looks. This is a work in progress. And if uh, we just go on the next slide really quickly, um, that's actually, that's my book. My cover of the book is part of this painting and I'm gonna explain why I chose it. Ivana Shimonovic is a Croatian contemporary artist, one of my favorite ones. Um, and this piece of hers is just spoke to me. Since my story is about, my novel is about life and how messy it is. And it's about all these wonderful women uh, starting from my mom, my grandma, uh, her mom, who um, they had to hit their talents um, in the kitchen. Let's just say so. So the life wasn't easy for them. It's still not easy for us, but I think it's kind of, um, it gets easier and easier with every generation. This painting for me was pure life. It has many layers. It's gentle and it's deep and it's confusing and it's simple. It's everything at the same time. Um, so I begged Ivona to allow me to use a part of her painting. Um, if we can just go back, please, uh, to the previous slide. Thank you. Um, I uh, begged Ivona to give me, to allow me to use for painting as a cover of my, of my book and she allowed it. Now, um, we chose one segment that we think, it, that we thought we, it's gonna, it's gonna fit nicely to be, um, to be the cover of the book. And if you, you can notice in the top right corner and in, in the lower left corner, there is a little bit of this passionate orange. And that's exactly what I wanted to say in the book. Like life can be hard, but there is always this um, passion, um, your talents, your hobbies, your activities, uh, things you want to do, things you want to accomplish in your life. They're always, no matter how people are trying to bring you down and not allow you to be yourself, there's always this passion peaking um, somewhere from the corner. And that's the, that's the story behind uh, my cover of the book. Um, can we go on the next slide? One more. Thank you. So once you're done um, with the book, like book, book is out there and it's um, it's it's out there for everyone's um, eyes to read. Uh, you have to do a couple of book signings or promotions. Um, I had three of them. Each was uh, done in um, in Split, Dubrovnik, and Zagreb. Um, Split is my hometown, and most of the story takes place in my hometown, so that's why that the first one was um, in Split in June 2021. Um, then the second one was in Dubrovnik. I live in Dubrovnik. It's been my home for the past 20-something years, and hopefully it's going to stay like that. And then the last one was in Zagreb. Zagreb is the capital of Croatia, and it's a very small country, and everything important, that, that whatever happens, you have to also cover it in Zagreb. It's, it's the capital of the country and everything takes place kind of in the, in the capital. So that's why we did it there. Um, I personally enjoy these book promotions because it gives you an opportunity to meet your readers. They can ask questions, they can comment. Um, I think it's really useful and um, it's useful and it's fun. Uh, can we move to the next, to the next slide, please? Here, I just included a couple of photos for you. Um, every book signing and every book promotion is a small event for itself. Um, we had a moderator of the whole event um, and who was participating. It was me, publisher, editor, and on the left side, you're gonna see my uncle. He's actually a famous Croatian uh, singer and he was kind enough to join me in Dubrovnik and uh, in Split Dubrovnik and Zagreb. Um, so it was really, really a um, couple of nice events. Next slide, please. So once everything is settled and the book is out there, living a life of its own, then people start to comment it. And um, it can be, as I said at the beginning, can be really, really rewarding and it can be scary if somebody maybe didn't like it. 
but you have to go through it. I think writing and writing your first novel and publishing it, it's a, it's a nice lesson for your ego. Um, it's, to me, it was very, very, it turned out to be very, very useful. Um, and I've always, I always enjoy reading these comments because you learn a lot from it and uh, you kind of see how people reacted to your story. Um, in order to be a writer, you need to go deep and you need to open your heart. You need to be able to scratch, cry, um, bleed, laugh. Uh, you need to feel, and then people are gonna feel where your story came from. Next slide, please. Um, I wouldn't go much further. I would like to leave enough time for questions if anybody um, has any questions. Um, I found this quote from Henry Miller and I really liked it. He said that writing is its own reward. I really believe that's true. And even though, if, even if I didn't get published, I would still be writing and I'm still writing and I will always write. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's gonna get published or not. It's just something that um, it's a part of me. And um, I think without writing, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be me. So thank you for your intention. Um, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, any comments, I would love to hear them, answer them, and uh, I'm listening. So if anyone has any questions, you can post them in the Q&A box uh, at any time, and we will get those over to Daniela. Um, so our first one is, assuming you experienced some dips in your confidence while you were writing your first draft, how were you able to overcome this? Uh, it was hard. <laughs> um, it's, you know, the, 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 the just the, the word confidence, um, that's, the, that's the correct word to mention when it comes to first writing, because that's exactly the reason why I didn't start writing before. Um, not, not start, okay, I started right after high school. That was my kind of first draft, but um, I didn't want anyone to see it because confidence was missing. And then in time and in, I don't know if it's uh, being more mature or reading all these stories that are out there and some of them are really not good. I started thinking, I think I can do better. There is a one night sentence I remember Toni Morrison said, um, she said, I was reading and reading and one day I wanted to read a book and I couldn't find it. So I wrote it. And that's exactly what happened to me. I wrote a story I would love to read. Uh, for example, my story is not linear. It doesn't follow uh, years and it's, yeah, and it's actually not easy to follow because it, it has a lot of characters. I mean, it, it is five generations. Um, of a family, but um, I hate simple things. And I wrote a book um, that you need to concentrate when you when you read it. And I think I wrote um, I wrote a book exactly the exactly the type of books I enjoy reading. Great. Um, so we have another question today with the reemergence of blogging platforms like Substack or Medium. Do you plan to write there? And if yes, how would you promote it? And what do you think about those platforms? Um, I think they're good. And I think they're good in promoting writing and, and reading. But um, at this point, I don't think I'm gonna write there. I'm a pen and um, paper kind of girl. And I just um, enjoy, I, for example, I, I do have Kindle and I read sometimes on it. But I, I always go back to the actual book. I love the paper, uh, paper issues. Okay. Um, not a question, but a comment. Just wanted to thank Daniela for her presentation. Hope to write a book too. So hearing your process has given them a good foundation on what to expect. Thank Great. You. Thank you. Um, another question. Um, you know, throughout the writing process, what were some of the struggles you had? Well, I would say the biggest struggle was um, 
should I write it or not in terms of being so honest and it, it is um it, it's difficult when you're writing about people you know and who are close to you so my first three readers were actually my mom and uh my two uncles um that's basically a whole family I've got as, as, aside from my children but they were the word they, they were they were my so-called um um beta readers that that's how we call them in Croatia so once I got their blessings that I can go on with the story that's when it got easier it is easier for me but in terms of um writing yeah I would say that inspiration is not so easy to get like if you have enough time to write then you're not inspired if you're inspired then you kind of um missing missing some free time um but when you get inspired that's I, that, that's what i said at the beginning when it hits you you just have to do it i spent so many nights um writing because i couldn't stop i was tired but i, I just couldn't stop and it it, it it it's the story is really like a jealous person you know who grabs you and won't let you go until it's um until it's it's out there on the paper Okay. Um, one of our listeners wants to know, are you planning a full-time writing career? If book one was a memoir, what do you have planned? Um, <laughs> writing as a career. Yeah, that, that sounds wonderful, actually. Yeah. But I don't think it's possible. And not at this point. Um, um, many, many, reader, many writers in Croatia are doing something extra, like they're literature professors or journalists or um, most of them have something on the side or they teach, they, they, they teach at university or in schools. Um, um, I don't know a lot of people who live out of writing, but a long-term plan, yes, that would be amazing. Great. Um, somebody is curious if you can share a little on the finances behind the process of writing a book. There are none. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, finances behind the book. Actually, I have no idea how much does it cost to publish it because, as I said, I never wanted to go into self-publishing story, at least not with the first book. Maybe I'm going to change my opinion in the future. Um, in terms of earning money, it's, um, it's really, really small. Actually, there's one thing I learned in this process, and I would like to share with you i think it's uh, it's it's an it's important that people notice when you are ordering directly from a publishing company um and let's say it's a small publishing company that needs a certain push like mine does um then you are that money goes directly to them when you buy from a bookstore uh bookstores are taking a certain percentage of that money some of them are taking even 50 percent so when you're buying a book please take into consideration who gets the money. Sometimes really it costs, um, it, it's, uh, sometimes it's, um, the bookstore takes 50% for example, but they're gonna take another five or 10 if you, if, they, um, if you want your book to be in the window. So publisher and at the end, it's not, he's, they're, not left with, they're not left with much. So that's one thing that, that it should be, that should be considered. Great. Uh, anyone else have any additional questions they want to ask Daniela? Looks like you answered all the questions, which is awesome. So a lot of good information and, uh, you know, really appreciate you sharing your story with everyone. And, um, you know, I think we all need to, for those of us in the States, need to learn Croatian so we can read the book. <laughs> no, actually, what you can do is find me a translator for the English version. There we go. <laughs> we would think we have, hopefully somebody at RIT <laughs> could help with that, right? That would be amazing. So, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Daniela, for sharing your experience with our alumni and friends today. And thank you for joining us. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about upcoming events, you can use the link that's located in the chat box. As mentioned earlier, we will be releasing info and additional webinars in the upcoming weeks. Finally, if you're not already connected to the RIT Alumni Association and RIT Croatia Alumni social media channels, 
We also encourage you to do so, and those links can also be found in the chat box. We appreciate everyone for joining us, and we hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week. And Daniela, thank you again for presenting today. Thank you. It has been a pleasure, and thank you so much for inviting me. And I would like to say hi, and thank you so much for all the participants. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any uh, questions, please feel free to find me on email, Facebook, whatever. Um, uh, I can answer all of your questions. Great. We appreciate it and enjoy your week, everyone. Thanks. You too. Bye. Bye.